Well, good morning. Welcome to Lotus Independent Baptist Church. Let's get started with the adult Sunday. A couple of things I want to uh, just give you a, a little bit of a quick recap on. I heard market days went really well. I was literally walking out my door yesterday to go join Brother Austin at the market outreach, and he said, hey, we're going to have to close it down. We have literally given out every track we own. And so uh, that's a good problem to have. Um, he had ordered tracks about three and a half or weeks ago or something like that and uh, with plenty of time to get in, but, well, it's hard to get stuff anymore, if you know what I mean. And so uh, it was scheduled to deliver, and then it was out on the for delivery, and then apparently we had a holiday on Friday, because that's what it says. Couldn't deliver because of a holiday. So, nevertheless, sounds like a UPS driver ran out of time. <laughs> um, so... I mean, we gave out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Thank you for all that uh, showed up. But uh, certainly the Lord knew all about that. It's uh, not my favorite thing in the world to run out and still have opportunity. But God knows, doesn't he? Hey, let's, uh, let's turn to Genesis. Um, let's, let's go to Genesis 6 together. And as you're going there, this will be kind of a jumping off place for us. But um, we are going to continue our study in angels this morning. And this will probably at least be about two or three more weeks. I don't know, maybe. I, it just depends upon how fast y'all learn. That's all. Y'all are slow learners. It's going to take a long time. Miss um, Sharon asked me if we could pray for Brother Norbert, his, uh, uh, Brother Norbert's son. It's your son from California, right, Miss Sharon? Yeah. Uh, is in town. They haven't been in in a while. It seems like it's been a long time, about two or three years, Miss, two years. Yeah, and they came down. So uh, they're there with Brother Norbert. Normally they'd be here in church with us. Uh, but Brother Norbert Friday took a bad fall and is pretty bruised up and uh, and pretty mangled. So they're home with him, taking care of him. So Miss Sharon can be at church today. And uh, because of that, there'll be no American Sign Language class today, in case I forget to announce that uh, in church. And um, Miss Sharon will probably be going home between services, I'm sure. And uh, it's a good thing that they're here. And uh, obviously, that's a huge help. But uh, pray for Brother Norbert. And um, a, a shout, men, maybe encourage him and let him know you're praying for him. There was something else. I didn't write it down, and so it lost. I lost it. Oh, well. If it comes to me, we'll just stop, and I'll give it to you. How's that? So we've been doing, uh, we've been doing angels for quite some time. We're going to be here in Genesis chapter 6 in just a moment, but let's pray and ask God to do something wonderful uh, this morning. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being here and, Lord, being able to study the Word of God. I pray that you'd strengthen us this morning as we uh, learn these things together, Lord. I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to be able to... Uh, be encouraged and strengthened, Lord, to be, uh, Lord, certainly uh, struck with awe about who you are and what you've done. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. You know, the Bible tells us in Psalms that the purpose of creation um, is for what? Well, there's two, is a twofold purpose of creation. And I'd say that the, the first purpose um, aligns with the second purpose in a great way. There's a twofold purpose of creation. Like, and as far as what we see. Nothing? To, okay, to bring glory to God. To, to make us aware that there is a God. It declares God. It declares God. It, by itself, it declares there is a God. Um, the Bible tells us who He is. Creation tells us that He is. Does that make sense? Creation's second purpose, or really... I don't want to. I want to say that they're they're hand in hand. It's it's like having a right hand and a left hand. They're not one more important than the other. Okay. Um, I suppose if you're right-handed, you might make an argument, or left-handed, you might make an argument. Um, but nevertheless, nobody would be willing to give up one, right? They're not more important. One's not more important than the other. Um, and so it's to declare that there is a God, and the second is for our use. He made it for us. It is a gift for us for our use, to subdue it and to work and have dominion and explore. And, and uh, it's a playground, quite frankly. God gave man a playground. <clears throat> um, it, it, you say, that, that sounds bad. Like, it's not a playground. Well, it kind of was. It wasn't work to do anything. Like, not the way you would use the word work, right? Uh, it was enjoyable. Everything was enjoyable. Everything was fun. Uh, even tilling the ground and gardening a garden. It was all fun. Every bit of it was fun. Nothing was difficult at all. And so, um, I, even the way we use the word difficult, I don't know that difficulty is necessarily bad. 
or hard. Um, challenge is a good thing many times, but it was not something that was by the sweat of our brow as we see after the curse. And so it's that way. And then you've got to wonder, uh, but it's not completely that way because there are literally innumerable amount of stars out there and we'll never be able to use any of them. Does it, you know, we just couldn't ever get to that point. God made such a universe for us uh, that it is in inexhaustible. We'll never exhaust it. We'll never exhaust it. By the way, consider for a moment that if God gave us everything we could possibly need, and we're always talking about renewable energies, we're not going to run out of anything. Not if we're managing things well. We're not going to run out of anything. You chop a tree down, put a tree in the ground. Guess what? It'll grow. And we can keep doing that. I mean, we've got to be responsible, of course. I'm not saying that, suggesting that. But uh, there's no need to... God's given us everything we need. We're not going to run out. And uh, very interesting. Anyways, I don't have any... I don't have time to move into that. Creation was made for that. But then again, we can't see part of creation. You can't even interact with part of creation. There's so much more to create what God created that we don't even we don't even quite understand, and we get these little nuggets of information about uh, angels and the spiritual world that was created in conjunction with the material. Um, that it's interesting to us, and I think that there's so much mystery in it and so much mystique in it that we. Uh, we sometimes become overly interested in these things uh, at the detriment of learning what we need to learn. But nevertheless, all of the Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. It's profitable for doctrine, reproof, and instruction. And so it's profitable we need to learn these things. So we, we discovered uh, last week that God created the angels, of course, right? And uh, that's kind of where we stopped off. We were talking about... Um, the difference, but we were looking at uh, Genesis 6 a little bit. That's where we were at last week, and the, the sons of God and the daughters of men. I will briefly recap, but we will not dive back into this. It will take too long. We, we find here that some people think uh, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. They take the one passage in Job chapter number 1 that says that the sons of God came to present themselves to God and Lucifer with him, and they apply that, past, that, that particular Hebrew word to all the rest of the Hebrew words that we see in the Old Testament. By the way, I think if my memory serves me correct, it's about five or six times. Now, in the book of Job, Job's poetic book, and so, once again, you don't want to define a word by poetry, okay? Um, there's a lot of poetry in, uh, even, even in, in the, the Psalms where it talks about uh, God gathering Israel like a, a mother chicken. You know, like a mother hen under his under her wings. Of course, we would not suggest that God is a chicken. You see what I'm saying? It's a poetic book. It's designed to do that. And so remember that. And so I'm not I'm not inclined uh, to use that to be able to define the sons of God here as angelic beings. It is the uh, it is my opinion, and quite frankly, I think it falls in line with the rest of the scriptural evidence that. Uh, you can only reproduce after your own kind. God went out of his very way to say that in Genesis 1, 2, and 3. He went way out of his way to say that. He repeated himself just a plethora of times on purpose to make sure that you knew. It's almost as if God wrote the Bible and knew that one day we would be going, oh, you can evolve into something else. You can't. God said that people and animals recreate after their own that's it. They don't cross kinds. It doesn't happen. And so uh, that defies God's created order. Of he makes the rules, and so there you go. That's, that's kind of my big, big stick on that. I don't, I don't have to go into all that this morning. But we do find um, w there's been a question. I've had people ask me, when were they created? And the simple answer is let's turn back to Genesis chapter number 2, verse number 1. Angels, it says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Many people believe, now you will see regularly, and I think here's a good case for when God talks about the hosts, the heavenly hosts, for instance, or the, the hosts of heaven, that being a reference to an, a, angels. Um, and I'm, I'm okay with that. That may or may not be what this is referring to, 
in chapter number 2 and verse number 1. It may not be specifically speaking of angels. It could be speaking of, of the host of the heavenly bodies, for instance, the stars in the sky. Um, I, have, I, do, I don't know that you can put a yes or no on that, but I do know this. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And on the seventh day, what did God do? He rested. He rested from what? Because we all know that God didn't... If you, you're gonna, if you have listened to the last couple of podcasts, you'll already know the answer to this, and, and it's kind of like cheating. But has, is God working today? Okay, I got mixed. Is God working today? Yes. But he rested permanently from what he's doing right there until, another, until a new time. What did he do then? What is he resting from? Creation. Not creating anymore. God stopped creating. He'll do that when he burns this place down. Literally, the heavens will melt with a fervent heat, uh, is what the Bible says in 1 Peter. And God will make a new heaven and a new earth, and there'll be a creation again. God's not going to redeem this world. He's going to destroy it and fix it and put his redeemed people in the new one. And so he's rested from his creative acts. Therefore, there are no angels being created after this day. So the short answer is, when did God create the angels? Before day seven. Before the conclusion of day six. But I think we can narrow it farther down from other clues in Scripture. And so uh, let's look, if we will, in Job chapter number 38. In Job chapter number 38, of course. Once again, I'll give you a word of caution when you're in the book of Job that there are some things that are uh, you know, you can certainly uh, nail down a matter of fact, but you uh, have to understand that it's also a poetry book as well. But nevertheless, Job chapter number 38. Let's look together, if we will. Verse number one. <clears throat> hey, this is interesting. I'm sorry. I'll be reading this tomorrow on my daily Bible reading. I could have just part turned to it and didn't even know it. Uh, this is what I read up to. I read up to 37 this morning. Okay, 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, so God's speaking, right? We, we've established God's speaking. Let's drop down to four. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare it if thou hast understanding. God speaking. He asked Job, hey, were you here when I made this? <clears throat> Let's read verse number seven together. When the morning stars sang... Together, and all the sons of God shouted for glory, or for, uh, for joy. Now, once again, you say, wait a second, I thought you said don't use the sons of God as a reference to angels. No, in the book of Job, it's already been established as a form of poetry that he does that, okay? And so I know that that, hurt, that hurts people's brains sometimes, but in the book of Job, he does uh, reference them as being the sons of God. They shouted for joy at creation. There were people present. People is in a loose term. Uh, angels aren't people, obviously, but what are you going to call them? Um, there were angels present at the foundation creation of the earth. That being said, they were present when God laid the foundations of the earth. Man, however, was not created until what day? Sixth day. There was no man when created when God uh, laid the foundations. And th so therefore, they were created before at least the sixth day and probably before the fifth day and the fourth day. Foundations. What would you consider to be the foundations? Okay. I would go with like the earth's crust maybe. Maybe. When God created land. That's the fa I, I don't know. We know in day one, the earth was without form and void. We know, in, and uh, God made light, right? And so, when you see that word foundations, where is it? I don't know, one, two, three, something along those lines. You see the angels, I, I will tell you what my opinion is, and I have no evidence for it at all, except for what I think from a passage in Scripture, but it's not... It's not such a leap. It's not such a proof positive text that I would be able to sit here and tell you, thus saith the Lord, okay? Angels always manifest themselves as angels of light. 
And when God said, let there be, I just assumed that he made angels. Or, let's hear it, Miss Marta. Yes. It could be very well be the heavens when the heavens were made because there was separation of the firmament and the... Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Because God said in the beginning. But the beginning of the world, not the beginning of him. But, of but, but angels cannot be uh, pre-creation because they have to have a start. Well, they do have a start, but why is it that our physical environment, the start of us, that we, why is he limited in his ability to create other spiritual things? Because in the beginning denotes that that's the beginning of time. There, is, there was no time before that. Time is a measurement of uh, the, well, really how long it takes for one molecule to get to another place or whatever it may be. We measure time. Yeah, but there is no, you, you cannot, without time, you can't, see, God is timeless. He is the I am. And so, now this goes into high philosophy, quite frankly, um, which all philosophy comes from religious things. But um, if there is no time, you cannot have time-bound beings. They are bound by time. They're they literally bound. bound. By time, but they don't have a death. <coughs> they go on. That's why we they are, well, but we don't either. And we never have. Now, we have a second death, and it's eternal. Or we have a second life. We have life given to us by Christ. But Adam and Eve would have never died. They were, they were, they were a deathless creature. Um, and even when they sinned, it was still an indestructible being. Does, does that make sense? They go to hell for eternity. They, they are, no matter how you parse it, humans are eternal creatures. In the sense that we will always be. I, I, I don't. Does it help, Miss Aubrey? I understand your position. Yeah. I still think that God can create other things, other places. Well, absolutely. And, and I, 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 I think that that is absolutely 100% uh, true. Um, however, they are, yes, they're f spiritual, but they're also physical. I, I guess the reason I feel that is I, it seems to me that Satan was, it would have taken a lot longer than the time period for him to have that animosity towards God. I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like it took long for Adam and Eve to fall either because they were told to go forth and multiply, you know, and so there were no children, so it was at least less than, I mean, there were not even children born. There were no children conceived. Consider that for a minute. And God didn't make the two most perfect human beings super infertile. I'm just, I'll put it that way. Um... It could have very well been within a day that Adam and Eve fell, or two, like a week at best. I'm not suggesting a time frame, because I don't have one. I know it was um, probably less than months, just based on the fact that I know that God had an intention for them to be fruitful and multiply. There would have been a race of man regardless of the fall of man. There would have been more people than Adam and Eve. Now, that was God's intention. And so, uh, once again, I, I, God doesn't give us a day, but he does tell us he, he rested from his create, creative acts. And so he, we'll see, and again, as we move forward, just as a, as, a, as a commentary on that, we'll move forward, we'll see that angels, while we consider them to be spiritual beings, they are physical. They have, they have physical presence. They have physical bodies. They don't necessarily, now, and we know from, uh, we do know that there are certain physical things right now that are imperceivable to us, right? Like, there are certain um, light waves and um, things of those, we can't see them without the aid of technology. <coughs> Does that make sense? And so we know that there are things going on around us that we can't see that are part of our physical world already. We've discovered those things 
and through the, through the modern technology that we have and our increase in knowledge, we've been able to see things that were unknowable to our ancient forefathers. Angels, we always assume, are immaterial, but that's not what the Bible describes. They describe um, them to be material beings that operate on a different plane of existence. Um, and so, in our sci-fi world, that's a little bit easier. Like, we watch way too much TV, and it's a little easier to understand. I mean, honestly, it's a little e I think it's probably a little easier for us to understand because we've watched a lot of TV where there are people from, like, other dimensions or some nonsense like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but that's kind of what we're looking at. They are created beings, and God did not begin to create until he said, in the beginning. What was before? Nothing. There, it was void and without form. What does void mean? empty so all of creation was empty it was it, um, and that's what there's too much evidence you say could God have created them a billion years whatever that means before the beginning of earth right a billion years before he created yes he could have but he has no there's no indication in scripture that it did there's a lot of indication that he created all of that we know, all of the hosts, all of the heavenly bodies, everything at the beginning. And I, it does seem like a short period of time. You say, how could he have built up that much animosity? I, I, how fast does it, I mean, I don't, how fast does sin happen? If it begins in the heart, how fast does it happen? Momentary. It's instant. You look at a thing and you lust. It's instant. The decision to carry out through that sin may take a little longer, but the sin itself was an instantaneous thing. Sam? So I was always taught that Satan fell because of his pride against Adam. Like that was the moment. I would, uh, I could, I would, uh, I would accept that argument. I don't know that we have a strong biblical, like, thus saith the Lord on that. Um, but I could see that, where here's Satan who gets to defend the glory of God, and um, he is certainly, as we would measure, as we would measure worth and capability, far superior to us. And the Bible, by the way, will tell us that angels are superior to us. Amen. The, the Bible says that. Psalms 8, 4 says, uh, uh, Psalms 8 specifically is probably the first time we find it, that angels are superior to us. God doesn't mince about that. He tells us again in Hebrews that they're superior to us. Um, that's why it's so incredible that God would become man instead of angel. Does that make sense? Um, and he made himself lower than the angel. As the Bible literally <coughs> describes it that way. And so when God would come down in the cool of the evening, in, the, in the, all of creation, including angels, you with me? All of creation was created for what? To glorify God but for the purpose of what? The use of man. Man was the crowning jewel of creation. Whether you, whether you are an angel or a sycamore tree, man was the crowning jewel. It doesn't matter what you are. It doesn't matter if you're the greatest diamond that ever existed or the, the most beautiful star in the sky, still man is at the center of all of it because that's what God said. Um, and I could imagine on day six, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Aubrey or Miss Sam, I could imagine on day six Satan going, I want someone to worship me. The, the intent of creation of angels and humanity is also different in and of itself as well. Absolutely. Like part because the angels, their existence is strictly servitude. Man's existence was mm -hmm. to be fellowshipping with God. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, uh, angels can't fellowship with God this way we do. They're not designed to commune. They're, they're, I, I, we have such a negative connotation on the word slave today in our modern society, but they are slaves. I want, I want, you know, like in the truest sense that they don't have choices. God owns them, if you will. Um, please don't let your modern sensibilities just mess with the way I'm talking, okay? But they don't have options. They had one. I don't understand it. God doesn't even tell us about that option. Right. It's not. It's not worth spending a lot of time on. But go ahead, Bill. Everything that God created in this whole wide universe is 
for a specific purpose. Right. He, he, his will has a specific purpose for everything in this world and in this universe. I agree. Everything has a purpose. We're going to look at the purpose of angels here in just a moment. Uh, why God created angels, and, and we'll see it here in a second. We'll look at a, a bunch of passages together. Um, but the reality is, is when, when we look at it, it's, you know, uh, what, the, the last thing I'll say to uh, that end, Miss Aubrey, and I'll, I'll give you a chance maybe um, to, to say what you think about that, but... Um, I have no ability to comprehend how it works to be an angel or what thinking is, and I would only be able to bring my humanity to it. Does that, does that make sense? And so there's no way for me to decide how long it would take or how long it wouldn't take. Or, uh, I would only be doing that from a place of a fallen human. And I, I, can't even mis I can't bring myself to think what would it be like to be in the presence and the glory of God. Could you even have those seeds fester in your mind? You're in the presence of God. It would be an instant throwing out of heaven. Because this entertaining the seeds of those thoughts, that itself would be sin and would, crush, would be thrust out of heaven immediately. So just the beginning of the thought would cause you to fall. Does that make sense? Because you couldn't have that thought. For you and I, if we go to the gas, uh, if we go to the rest, uh, the the checkout line, and we, uh, you know, they put all that stuff there for us, right? The impulse stuff, and they make it look real pretty. And they always have like uh, all the candy, okay, so that your kids will nag you to death, uh, and you'll give in because you're trying to do the work, right? <clears throat> Or, or you give in because you go, you know what, I need a Three Musketeers. <laughs> or what else do they have right there? All, those, all them trash magazines you have no business reading, but they put something pretty on the cover. And, and some of you men, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You look, and you've already done the sin. You may not look again, but you've already done the sin. Have you not already sinned? It was that instant. It was that fast. We act like it takes a long time to sin, to decide to sin, but you've already made a decision when you start entertaining a thought. Does that help, Miss Aubrey? With, with the, like, how long does it take to rebel? The thought itself was rebellion. Well, it's not fast. It's fast. I mean, I, I just have a different perception. That's okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
together in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. That's not the verse I wanted to find. Let's see, um, verse number 15, we'll start there. Oh, verse number 16 is what I wanted. So let's just read down there. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Here's another verse, by the way. Um, so, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities, powers. These words, um, dominions and principalities or powers, these are talking about angelic beings. Uh, you'll find that from other places. Things that were created by him and for him. And so, God created them for him for his glory, and we have the invisible and the visible. And so that gives us all of creation, of course, that is visible to us, but the invisible as well. That means that there are things in, here, in the world that are not angelic, that are invisible to us. And, they, and you say, how do you know that? Because we've already discovered things that were invisible to us for literally thousands of years. So what else is out there that we don't, we're not able to see? Um, they are all created for the glory of God. We can move on, and you could read a couple other things, Hebrews 1, 6, we can move there, but let's continue on to Psalms 103. One more thing that they were created for. So they were created for the glory of God. They were created, uh, they were created to worship God. Let's uh, go to Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Let's drop down to verse number 20 toward the end of it, and we'll read the last of this uh, chapter. Bless. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandment, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all the wor his works, in all places, in dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Here you find uh, that they were created, quite frankly, to do the will of God. That's it. They're, they're here to do the bidding of God. That's, all, that's what their purpose is, to do the bidding of God. They are servants. That's it. They have no choice but to serve. You'll find... Uh, now, in the heart of man, inherently, especially since we've fallen, is the concept of freedom. But it was before, by the way. In the heart of man, the concept of freedom is in... It, when we talk about it being in the DNA of America, it's not in the DNA of America. It's in the DNA of people. From the beginning, we were created with freedom a choice to either eat that free fruit of knowledge of good and evil or not. We've always had freedom. God has always given us freedom. We're the only creation that has ever been given that freedom. It's in our nature. It's part of the purpose of man. It's that fellowship with God, as Brother Ian was uh, highlighting a little bit ago, that fellowship with God has to have come from a... You can't fellowship with someone you're being forced to fellowship with. That's not communion. It's not, it's not bilateral. Angels don't have a bilateral relationship with God. It's very one-sided. God tells them what to do, and they do it. Amen. There is no, there is no uh, fellowship with him. It's not a friendship. They uh, exist to do the will of God. Hebrews 1, let's go to Hebrews uh, chapter number 1 together. You're going to beat me. I keep going right by it. Hebrews chapter number 1. Um, there's a lot of things. So Hebrews, I'll just give you an idea. Hebrews is saying Jesus Christ is better than. First part of it is better than the angels. Then it's better than Moses. Then better than. And so that's kind of where it goes through. Better than the sacrifices. And so let's look at uh, Hebrews chapter number 1, verse number 14. Um, it's, so this is verse 13, so you know that we're talking about angels. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. No angel did God ever say that to, but he did say it to Jesus Christ. Verse number 14. They are not all ministering spirits. Are they not all ministering spirits? Now, I want you to stop for a minute and look at this. They are all ministering spirits. What does minister mean? Servant. Servant. They are all servants. 
sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Their purpose is to serve humanity, but specifically the heirs of salvation. Who's the heirs of salvation? We are the recipients of salvation. That's pretty incredible if you think about it, that God created this entire class of beings for the sole purpose of ministering to humanity. You'll find here, we're tied together, by the way. I think maybe that might be the reason why humanity is so intrigued with angelic things is that we're, we're tied together. God created one for the other as far as to help and to minister. Not that God would have needed them. He could have done it all by himself. But hey, I'm not God's counselor, so I don't get to tell him what to do. In Ephesians chapter number 3, and I don't mean that irreverently. I, you know, sometimes you say stuff and you worry it comes out the wrong way. But let's go to Ephesians chapter number 3. I have sat and wondered, why do it that way? Have you ever done that? Why did God do it that way? So at, the, at the end of the day, I have to go, I don't know. But it must have been the right way to do it, because he did it that way. Um, Ephesians chapter number 3, verse number 10. Let's look at this together. Um, you, you can jot these things down. I, I encourage you to read them like larger paragraphs, but we'll never make it through this uh, before the end of the year. In, in chapter number 3, verse number 10, to the intent that now, unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places, so we know that is angelic beings, principalities and powers in heavenly places, uh, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So here we find in this passage that they were creating, they're created to observe the plan of God as witnesses. They're here to observe the plan of God. Read it in this context. I think it'll be uh, beneficial to you at some point. But they're here to observe. Remember in Job where it says, where were you when I made this place? Oh, I, had, I made the angels so they could watch this. So there would be witnesses to what took place for all of eternity. And so they are created for a multitude of reasons to observe the plan of God. You, you, let's go to 1 Peter for a minute. Let's look at this one together. Uh, 1 Peter chapter number 1. Um, let's verse number 7. The trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perishes through, uh, though it be tried with fire, might be found in the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, ye love, and whom, though now ye see him not, ye believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable before glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation, so your and I salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto as they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. So the last thing that uh, I'll leave you with is um, they were created to deserve God's plan, but there's a part of God's plan that is incredibly important to them to watch. They, they desire. This is the first time, by the way, uh, this is one of the only times that we'll see that angels are desiring something. You'll never see that anywhere else. They don't have desires. They get told what to do. But this time they have a desire. And what is it? They want to see the grace and mercy of God and how that plays out. Why? Because they didn't get it. The good angels will never receive the grace and mercy of God. Why? Because they don't need it. And, and no need for it. Absolutely no need for it. They've never caused a problem to themselves that require grace or mercy. They have no need of grace or mercy. And so they don't 
They've never experienced it, and they don't have any need for it, and they never will have any need for it. The bad angels, if you will, um, Satan and his demons, they never will get it. They have great need of it, but they'll never get it. And the good angels know about it. They know that there are bad angels. There are, and there, there's a multitude of. There's not just, you know, just demon. There are demons chained in darkness for another day. There, there are those that are free to run amok. There are those uh, that are apparently presenting themselves. I, they're all over the place, and they're, you know, we try to kind of pigeonhole them all into one group, but they're, they're not. There's, there are a bunch of them. They're chained into the pit already. You say what? Hell, they're already chained there, and they've been tormented since the fall. Apparently, they are there to observe that. They, they specifically want to look into it, to observe how that you and I can get grace. And that goes back to the purpose. The angels have no, the purpose of angelic beings is not communion. You see, when, God, when you love a friend, you're willing to do some things to restore a friend even when they hurt you. Angels are not God's friend. They're his creation. They're no different than, I'm not trying to be mean. They're no different than dogs and cats. Amen. No different. Now, I'll grant you, they're of greater intellect. <laughs> particularly of cats. <laughs> 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 I'm going to run off cat people. I'm not against cats. They're wonderful. They kill rats and snakes. Dogs can never catch them. They are of greater intellect and certainly more magnificent. But they're no different than any other creation that God created. Just, there's no... By the way, he didn't breathe into them a what? A soul. They're not created in the image of God. We are. That's unique. No other creation that has ever been created or ever will, I suppose, because there will be a new heaven and new earth, will ever bear the image of God like you and I. Amen. That's why we fight so hard for life. That's why it's such a point, by the way. We're voting, by the way, in a couple of days. I hope that you know that. The primaries are important. They're probably more if not if not they're as important and, and if not more important than the actual election i don't know they're kind of like left hand right hand thing you know um if you don't vote in the primary then you're kind of stuck with whoever you get stuck with so go make a decision why do you think christians by and large vote for life because when god grants a living soul it's created in the image of god that's unique and special there is no one born by mistake. Amen. Amen. No one. It drives me nuts, by the way. Remove it from your vocabulary. If you had a child that you didn't plan, don't ever label them as a oops or a mistake or an accident. There is no such thing. They are all planned by God. God breathed into us a soul. We have a, that's why we have that spark of divine in us. And it exists nowhere else in all of creation. Another reason why Satan might have been jealous. Amen. I'll have, I, 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 want to, I want to be God. I don't know. Humanity is certainly the, the thing that he was after. I don't have time to go into all the different kinds of angels, so we won't. Um, by the way, I'll give you a hint. There are only three of them that are listed in Scripture. I'm not suggesting there are only three. There are only three that we know of. That's how, I mean, that's really what it boils down to. I don't know. I'll tell you what the Bible says the three are, that we are aware of, that God describes to us. And then, you know what? When we get to heaven one day, we might be shocked that there are thousands of other kinds. I don't know. I don't even begin to speculate on that, quite frankly. Uh, but nevertheless, we know of three of them, and they're given to us for a reason, so we might want to learn why we're given those three different kinds. Uh, let's pray together and ask God to do something wonderful this morning, and uh, I would ask you about questions, but other, we will have time for that. So let's pray.
Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to study your word. I pray you strengthen us, encourage us, and bless us, Lord, as we look at uh, Lord Angels. We know that they're even paying attention to this very moment, Lord. They, they are intrigued by the concept, Lord, that we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb that was found, uh, slain before the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ. As we study that week, Lord, leading up to the crucifixion, even this morning as we are in the Gospel of John, I pray that you'd strengthen us, encourage us, and bless us. Help us to see, Lord, the, the greatness of and the wonder and beauty of it all. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.